Okay, in this video, we're going to go over something called rotations, which is a type of transformation that takes place in geometry. And this is covering uh, common core state standards for high school geometry in congruence standard A4. All right, so let's get right to it. Rotation. It pretty much means exactly what you think it means. It's basically taking an object like this one that I have here, and you're rotating it or you're pivoting it in either direction counterclockwise or clockwise around a particular point uh, and, and change its, and it's changing its location, usually along the x-y axis. Now, I've left some of this off the screen because I want you to go over these conditions that you need or things that you need to know in order to perform a successful transformation that is a rotation. Now, the first thing you need to know is the angle of the rotation that you're going to do. Now, let's think about that. On a flat surface, like this one, x-y axis, there's basically 360 degrees in a round circle, right? So I can actually indicate the number of degrees I want this to move. Like if I wanted to move 90, 180, 270, or 360, right? And I can do it in either direction. So remember what I said, we need to know the angle of the rotation. We need to know the direction that it's going, so again, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And then we need to know where the center of the rotation is, or what I like to call the pivot point, okay? Where is the pivot taking place? Now here I just set up a really simple example of a triangle. Okay, this is a right triangle. And I'm going to rotate, I want to rotate this right triangle 90 degrees clockwise around the origin, which is zero, zero. Now you can actually rotate this triangle from any point that you want, right? I could rotate it right from one, one. And, and, and placing the vertex right on one, one, I would just do something like this, right? I would just pivot it right there. And that point would stay right at one, one, right? Or I can say, I want to rotate it around the origin like I'm doing here, 90 degrees. So I would move it something like this until I hit 90 degrees, and then I would stop. All right. Now, before we actually get around and do that, though, I want to do a couple things and use some vocabulary that you've already learned. Remember that where the original image is located or it's called the pre-image, right? So that's the original location. So let me just write that over here. Pre-image is the original location. And I'm not going to write location in there. But once we have that original location, I want you to take note of what the three vertices are. What are the coordinates for the three different vertices, all right? Now, I'm going to call this point down here, point A. All right, I'll call this point, point A. In fact, let me just do it this way. We'll call this one point B, and we'll call this one point C. Now, let's go ahead and mark what the locations are. We know that this is 1, 1. We know that B looks like it's 1 along the X, looks like it's 7 along the Y, and we look like C, looks like it's at 5, 7, okay? Now let's go ahead and perform our rotation. And this is the particular rule that we're going to follow. We're going to rotate, we're going to transform and ro by rotation this triangle 90 degrees clockwise around the origin, okay? So, now how do I know what 90 degrees looks like? Now I'm going to draw a little line here where the vertice, or the vertex rather, is connected to the origin. And then I'm going to rotate what I think is 90 degrees. And look what happens. I'm actually creating a 90 degree angle here. And that's how I know that I've gone 90 degrees, right? And I went in the clockwise direction. So let me just go ahead and put that back where it belongs. And I want you to come up with 
what the new location of the rotated image is, right? And remember, you call this part the image itself, and that's where the image locate that's where the triangle ends up all right and notice now also that we can't just call this a anymore but now we want to call it a1 we want to call the b location b1 and we want to call the c location c1 and i want you to take a second and go ahead and estimate or eyeball pretty much what the new coordinates are for the three different vertices okay you can stop the video right here go ahead and do your thing and then come right back Okay, I'm assuming you've done that. And let's see what we can do with the new locations are. We know that now A1 looks like it's 1, negative 1. Okay. It looks like the B1 looks like it's 5, 6, 7. So 7, 0. Or excuse me, 7, uh, 7, negative 1, because it went down 1 here. 7, negative 1. And it looks like the C1 is also 7, but it looks like it went down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and looks like maybe 6. Okay? So I hope that was helpful. Remember, again, you need, for a rotation, it's just changing the area of your figure in space, usually along the XY plane. Okay? You need to know the angle of your rotation. Okay, in this case we said 90. We need to know to the direction, which is, again, it's either going to be clockwise or counterclockwise. And then finally we need to know where the center of that rotation is, and that's the pivot. All right, and, and again, it can be any point, but we chose the origin for this particular problem. Okay, I hope that was helpful.